Hey everybody, it's Mr. Wistar. Um, in this lesson, we're going to talk about coding style, which is extremely important uh, as you start becoming an effective programmer. We'll talk about what good coding style is and why it's so important when you're writing code. And then we'll go through a couple of the major categories of uh, style guidelines that I want you to keep in mind as you're programming in this class. So, why is style so important? Uh, there's a famous quote that I learned when I was learning how to program, which is that old code never dies, it just ends up uh, having to be maintained by someone else. And it's really important that the code that you write isn't just understandable by you, but it has to be understandable by other people. But there's more reasons to have good coding style than just thinking about how other people are going to look at your code. It actually helps you when you're writing your programs. A lot of the coding guidelines that we're going to talk about are actually sort of designed in defensive programming, meaning tips that you can use to make it less likely that you'll make mistakes. And uh, if you write readable code, it'll actually save you time. I know that sometimes coding style seems a little tedious, but believe it or not, you're actually saving yourself time on the back end. If you can read your code quickly, you don't have to waste time trying to figure out how it works. So there are a lot of style guidelines to think about, and if you look in the Java Language Coding Guidelines document, you will see it, it looks very long. And you're not going to be expected to know uh, all of those guidelines right at, up at, uh, at the beginning. Um, and you're certainly not expected to have them memorized all the time. Uh, but over the course of the year, we will gradually start including more and more of them into our expectations. And so looking at that huge document, I've tried to boil it down into a couple of major categories, which I've put into this acronym WINK. Uh, and that stands for your use of white space, how you indent your code, how you name your variables and classes, and how you write comments. So let's go through and talk about a little bit about each one of those. So white space. What is white space? Well, for starters, white space means um, anytime you use spacing around the code that you write. And that includes both spaces, like the spaces in between words in your code, but it also includes blank lines. And both of those are important you really should put at least one blank line between each uh, major uh, kind of set of code uh, in your program. It's kind of like if you think about each section of your code as being like a paragraph in an essay, um, putting a blank line is like hitting return uh, at the end of a paragraph so that you can see uh, the uh, separation between those sections you should include at least one uh, blank space between operators. So if you're writing, for example, 5 plus 2, you should write 5 space plus space 2. And that's just to make things a little easier to pick out when you're reading them. And the last one is that you should try to keep your uh, lines of code down to less than 80 characters. And we'll see in a minute how to find out how long your uh, lines are in JGRASP. But the reason why you want to do that is you never want to have to horizontally scroll to read a line of code. and You don't want to make anybody else do that either. It's tedious, half the time you'll be lazy and you won't even bother to read it, and that leads to you not really understanding how your code works. And the nice thing about a language like Java is Java doesn't care about spacing. You can take a line of code, uh, a statement in Java, and you can spread it out over ten different lines. Um, so the important thing is to break up your statements so that they don't take up too much horizontal space. Okay, let's talk about indentation. Indentation is, well, it's incredibly important. I've gotten to myself to the point now where I just can't even read code that's not indented properly. So if you ever ask me to look at your code in class, the first thing I'll probably do is re-indent it if it's not indented, because I just, that's not how my brain, that's how my brain works. And the simple rule of thumb with indentation is, uh, if you have a set of code inside a set of curly braces, it all has to be indented exactly the same amount. And every time you have a new set of curly braces, you indent one more tab. So the first set of code in your program inside of your class is indented one tab stop. And then when you start writing a method, uh, which we'll talk more about later in the class, uh, that code gets indented another uh, tab. So it, it should all line up vertically. And that's really important because it helps you instantly tell visually 
which code is part of the same block. Uh, other important guidelines when it comes to indentation is that when you have pairs of curly braces, they need to line up vertically. Okay, there are some people who say that it's okay to have the open curly brace um, on the same line where you write the statement that it belongs to, but I really don't think that's a good idea, and a lot of other programmers don't, because then the open curly brace is over here, and the closing curly brace is down here, and they don't line up anymore. And the reason why lining those up is so important is that sooner or later you're going to forget your closing curly brace or your open curly brace. And the easiest way to spot that is if they line up vertically because you can just scan up and down and see what's missing. So it's really important that your curly braces line up. And it's also really important that you use curly braces. There are some um, statements like loops and conditional statements where technically speaking you don't have to use curly braces for the code that's inside them but you should okay when we get to talk more about those I'll reinforce this but you should always use curly braces because uh, if you forget to use them and then you include like four statements inside of your loop then only the first statement actually gets put in your loop the rest of them are just kind of hanging out there in space and you have an error and you don't realize it so this is an example of what we were talking about when we say defensive programming just put even if it's a one line loop put that one line inside curly braces because you never know when later on it's going to become a two line loop or a three line loop so that's just good practice um, let's talk about naming so this has to do with how you name your classes, how you name your variables. And there are some actual syntax rules for how you name things, which we're not going to get into right now. We'll get into that when we talk about uh, creating variables. But uh, I want to talk to you about how to use good names. Um, because believe it or not, you should actually think carefully about the names that you choose for your variables. Uh, we've gotten to a point now where you can use long variable names, and you should your variable names and your class names and your method names need to be descriptive. You should never have a variable called you know, i5. Uh, if, you, if you ever have to write a comment explaining what the name of a variable means, it means you picked a bad variable name. Uh, if you ever point out a variable to someone and they say what is that, you picked a bad variable name. So try to pick a variable name that describes what it is that it does. Uh, I've read somewhere that sort of the sweet spot for variable names is like anywhere from maybe 6 to 15 characters. Um, not so many that it's tedious for you to type, but not so few that you need a decoder ring to figure out what it means. A couple of other guidelines, and these are pretty important too because they establish expectations in the minds of your readers, are that you should always capitalize the name of a class, and you should lowercase the names of your methods and your variables. And that way you can very quickly take a look at something and see whether it's a class or whether it's not. The last thing is if you have constant variables, which we'll talk about later in the class, but that's just a, that's a variable whose value never changes, you should put those in uppercase. And those should be the only kinds of variables that you ever put in uppercase. That way, again, just by looking at a variable name, you can tell what kind of variable it is. Again, these style guidelines are designed to save you time as a programmer, and that's one example of that. Okay, last one. The C stands for comments, and it's so important that um, we're actually going to give it double points in our style grading because comments explain your code to the people that are reading it. They don't actually affect how your program runs, but they're so, so important for you and also for the people who read your code. So we'll take a look. Um, as we go along and start adding more tools to our toolbox, you'll see um, other, we'll implement this uh, section in stages. But to start off with, every program you write has to have a comment block up at the top that has a one line description of what the program is, and then your name uh, after an at author tag, and then the date that you created the program after an at version tag. And you'll see an example of this in a minute. Every program has to have your name on it um, so that you can get credit for it, so that you can get blame for it if it's broken, um, and just so that you can establish ownership over the code that you write. That is critical. Um, 
Every class that you write gets a little comment up at the top of it just explaining what its purpose is. And that's different maybe from the file comment because you might have classes, you might have more than one class in your program. You need to explain, or in, a, in your file, you need to explain what each class is designed to do. Now when you start writing methods, when you start writing functions in your program, again, we haven't talked about those yet, but we will later, um, every method should get a comment explaining um, what the purpose of that method is, and also including these little extra tags for if it has parameters and return values. We'll get back to that later when we start talking about what those mean, um, but I just wanted to make sure I emphasize that now. If you have variables in your classes, they need to have a one-line comment explaining their purpose too. I know I said if you need to explain what a variable name is, that it's not a good name, but you should explain what the purpose of a class variable is. And part of the reason for this is that Java actually has a cool program in it called Javadoc that will take all the comments that you write and turn them into a web page explaining how your class works. But that only works if you actually write the comments that it can use to build the web page. So that's why we're writing all these comments um, for the stuff that we're putting in our classes. I will suggest, and you will probably ignore, um, a tip that you should write comments before you write the parts of your program. I actually think it's a really helpful design tool because it makes you think about what you're going to do before you actually sit down and write code. But if you're like 99% of my students, you'll end up writing all your comments after the fact. And that's fine too. Just write, make sure that you write them. Okay, let's take a couple minutes and take a look at a program that I wrote just to kind of illustrate the things that we've talked about. Here's a program that can take a CSV file and turn it into an HTML file. So up at the top, Here's that comment block showing you um, a description of the program, an at author tag with my name, and an at version tag with the date that I created it. Scrolling down, notice again everything is indented. Um, I can uh, just point out to you really quickly, you can get uh, JGRASP to indent your code for you. Um, and the way that you do that is using this little button up here called generate CSD. CSD is this thing that JGRASP has that kind of shows you a skeleton of your program. But let's just say, for example, I have this code here and I was a bad programmer, I forgot to indent it. Um, I can click this button here, generate CSD, and as part of that, Java indents everything for me. So really there's no excuse for not having your code indented because it takes one mouse click. And if you don't like all these little blue annotation marks over here, you can click on the next button over here to remove them and your indentation stays behind. But notice here, I've got a set of curly braces. Everything indent underneath that set of curly braces is indented the same amount. Um, variable names. I picked a long name for my class, but it explains what it does. Bearcat Athletes HTML tells you what it does. Here are some constant variables. Their names are in all caps. Um, down here is a method that I wrote, and I've got a comment for my method. And I have a new set of curly braces. And because of that, the code that's inside my method has to be indented again. So it's indented twice. So that's, uh, I mean, in a nutshell, I guess we should maybe talk about white space too. Um, notice that I've got a set of variables here, then a blank line, then another set of variables that are different, and then another blank line, and then I have a method. So that's a good example of how you can use blank lines to kind of spread out your code. So style is... Uh, something that is unique to each person. I'm not trying to tell you that you can't make your own choices about how you write your code, but the important thing about style is that you develop a consistent style and that you can generate expectations from someone who actually reads your code. So we're going to use these uh, set of style guidelines to help you start to develop some habits about the way that you write your code. Uh, we talked about four major areas of style, use of white space, indentation, variable naming, and comments. All right, you're all set.